nothing, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming today. I am pleased to make public today two Auditor General reports on the financial audits we completed in ministry portfolios and government and statutory authorities, also known as SAGCs, for the years ending 2012-13 and 2013-14. These reports were delivered to the Legislative Assembly by the former Auditor General, Alistair Swarbrick, prior to leaving his post at the end of September. These reports are focused on the financial reporting across individual entities within the public sector, and not government's consolidated financial statements or the entire public sector financial statements, which I made public last week. I have with me today Mr. Martin Rubin, the Audit Principal responsible for the OAG uh, performance audit practice. I'll start by making some opening comments uh, which will be followed by an opportunity for you to ask questions about the reports. As so many of the financial audits of ministries and portfolios and SAGCs for 2012-13 were delayed and gained finalized for issuance to the Legislative Assembly, we elected to report the results of the audits for both 2012 and 2013-14 fiscal years at one time. We believe this reporting will provide a clear picture of where government entities are with their fi financial reports. Accurate, reliable and timely financial information is a fundamental component in ensuring the effective governance and accountability of government and public entities. Without this information, the decision making of the Legislative Assembly, the government and public bodies is compromised as legislators and officials cannot make informed decisions regarding the allocation of resources and effectively manage the resources at their disposal. Furthermore, the government and public bodies cannot be held accountable for how they have used public money. The Public Management and Finance Law, the PMFL, along with various other laws, provide a framework by which government entities prepare their annual financial statements and how they form an important part of the annual reports that is supposed to be tabled in the Legislative Assembly. The Cayman Islands government entities prepare their annual financial statements in accordance with international accounting standards and by using the same standards across all entities, legislators and the public alike should be able to understand and compare the financial performance of the various entities that comprise the public sector. Anyone who has tried to read a set of financial statements know that the information contained in them is sometimes hard to understand and that they only provide a limited amount of information about how an entity collected and spent their funds. In the private sector, most readers of the financial statements simply go to the bottom line and look to see whether the company made a net profit and to find out what dividends were paid. It doesn't work the same way in the public sector as the bottom line is relatively meaningless. For example, ministries and portfolios are mainly program oriented and do not collect fees for the services provided. Therefore, the numbers don't provide the whole story. The audited financial statements for a public sector entity are but one component of accountability that must be provided to the Legislative Assembly for the stewardship of public funds. The PMFL requires managers in government to follow the principles of good governance which requires that entities be fully accountable for how they use their resources to achieve their objectives. The PMFL requires this accountability of public funds by way of an annual report that is supposed to be prepared by ministries and portfolios and SAGCs every year and to be provided to Cabinet by the middle of December. The annual report should provide information about the performance of each entity and explain to the members of the Legislative Assembly and the public how public sector managers used the funds that were given them at the beginning of the accounting cycle in their annual budgets. The accountability for the use of public funds is provided through performance information and is normally explained in the section of an annual report called Management Discussion and Analysis, or MDNA for short. The reports I'm making public today provide the Legislative Assembly and the public with details of my assessment on the state of financial reporting at the entity level for the 2012-13 and 2013-14 fiscal years, which I will now discuss some of those findings. 
These two reports provide evidence that the government entities continue to get better at meeting statutory deadlines and for submitting and completing audited financial statements. We found that entities are continuing to provide better submissions and supporting information to our office for audit. The improvements in quality are translating into improvements in timeliness and fewer qualifications. Six of the ministries and portfolios out of 15 that submitted their financial statements for the audit received an unqualified opinion for 2013-14, whereas 17 SAGCs out of 27 received an unqualified opinion. This is real progress since the last report that we issued for the 2012 reporting year and significantly better than when the former Auditor General Alistair Swarbrick first took post in July 2010. Two large ministries, the Ministry of Planning, Lands, Agriculture, Housing and Infrastructure and the Ministry of District Administration, Tourism and Transport, both received qualified opinions for the first time, moving away from disclaimers and adverse opinions. These two reports once again provide an overview of the significant control weaknesses we found in various entities when conducting our financial audits. A good example of the kind of weakness as we found was in the Ministry of District Admin, Tourism and Transport, where we found that officials are not keeping any records for inventory and thus leaving the amount off the financial statements. Many other ministries were not effectively managing their capital assets as they were missing good information about their values. In the SAGCs, the control deficiencies are being reduced. However, there are still significant concerns in some entities, in particularly the Health Services Authority and the Port Authority. As we reported last year, there continues to be improvement in the timeliness and quality of financial information being presented for audit. However, government officials still need to work out how they will provide meaningful information to the Legislative Assembly. The usefulness of audited financial statements is greatly diminished without providing performance information to explain what was done with the money. Unlike the pri private sector, it's not good enough just to say whether you made a profit or incurred a loss. Public sector entities also need to explain what they did with the money. This, is, this essential information is not being prepared by government officials. While good business practice requires this type of reporting and the PMFL requires managers in government to prepare this annual this report, not one ministry or portfolio has been preparing an annual report and only a few SAGCs are actually meeting this requirement. Those few entities that are preparing annual reports with management discussion and analysis are quite frankly not up to the standards expected in the law. And once again, we have to report that the financial reports being audited and submitted to the government are not being tabled in the Legislative Assembly on a timely basis. Some reports have been languishing in government offices for over a year before getting tabled in the Legislative Assembly and being made public. These delays are simply unacceptable for good accountability. In conclusion, I want to reiterate three main points I have raised in my comments today. First, I continue to find that the financial statements being produced by the government's entities need to continue being improved and the number of qualifi qualifications reduced in order for them to be credible. Many entities still need to develop the systems and practices that will allow for this to happen. Second, the government needs to table the financial reports and deal with the information being produced in a more timely way in order to provide the type of accountability necessary for the process to be meaningful and useful for the management of public funds. Much more work needs to be done before this can happen. The third key point I discussed was around the significant work that still needs to be done for government entities to be accountable for how they collected and used public monies without preparing annual reports containing the necessary performance information and the management discussion and analysis required to understand and explain the financial statements and tell how the entity used public funds. The process of preparing and auditing financial statements is pretty much reduced to an exercise in futility. 
We have been reporting for years that the government has not been tabling the financial reports in the Legislative Assembly in a timely manner once the audits have been completed. And when they have been tabled, they continue to lack information on performance as required under the PMFL and auditing standards or accounting standards. The hard work of governments, accountants and my auditors need to meet the statutory deadlines is undermined by these delays and any opportunity for real accountability is lost only because the reports stay on someone's desk. The Legislative Assembly should be getting regular updates from the public service including a timetable for when the entities will become compliant with their laws and provide accountability for the use of public funds. These accountability documents will become more and more important as government takes on more and more significant initiatives to change the way public services are delivered. In addition, government officials need to consider making changes to the current financial reporting framework to provide for more effective reporting of performance information on the individual entities, providing effective accountability and transparency in the use of public resources. Without simplifying legislation or the development of considerable systems and practices that would ensure compliance with the legislation in its current form, it will be challenging for stakeholders to know how government uses public resources. My office will continue to be available to work with the government officials as they take on significant challenges ahead to improve reporting. Thank you for your attention to my opening remarks. Mr. Rubin and I will now take questions about these two reports. Good morning, gentlemen. Joe Avery, K-927. Good morning. I was just Good morning. wondering if you could enumerate the type of inventories not being kept by the HSA and the Port Authority, which you named in that um, opening remarks. Is that is that stuff that, that you know, like physical things, or w what kind of deficiencies are you talking about there actually that was uh, with the inventory we were actually relating it to the ministry of district administration tourism and transport and not to the health service authority or port authority so in the ministry of um, district admin tourism and transport they hold inventories within their ministry which are not being tracked essentially or recorded and therefore not being uh, shown on the financial statements For, for example, district administration would have supplies of road material, um, yeah. building materials, all the things that district administration does, that they're included in that uh, particular ministry. So fairly significant amounts of inventory that really need to be um, uh, managed and uh, secured by government. So uh, if you have a good inventory system, you can at least know that you're managing those inventories uh, well. So at this point, there are no... Re no credible records being maintained for those uh, inventories. Just um, to make sure we use a mic when asking questions as yep. well. Yeah, no problem. Morning, gentlemen. Wendy from Kemen News Service. Um, in the the statutory authorities and government companies report, you you point to some issues at the port in your I summary of introduction, but then your actual sort of little detailed paragraph at the port. There isn't any specific problem noted in that. I mean, you, you obviously talk about the liabilities and how things have improved, in fact. Mm -hmm. Given that the port's going to be in a situation where it will be handling, if it goes ahead, government's biggest ever infrastructure projects ever, ever, ever. Um, d can you say, first of all, can you detail what concerns you have about the port and whether it's going to be in a position to handle such an enormous um, project and I've got one other question but I'll let other people sure. have a go first. Yeah. Um, in response to your question there basically in that first part that you referenced we're really talking about their financial statements and not the issues underlying say governance within the uh, Port Authority where we would really find that is potentially between the role of boards and management um, what roles they play and carry out uh, so are they clearly delineated and the other thing for them too is um, just in providing uh, risk management basis as well 
And at the very back of the report, we explain um, on page 49 a bit more of the audit opinion there uh, as well, which again, we indicated basically uh, for the 2013, 14, or 2013 it was unqualified, and in 2014 it was qualified in, in um, basically a scope limitation on evaluation of land at the Safe Haven Marina and related impact that had on equity in the financial statements. Just to add to um, the uh, Acting Auditor General's comments there, the whole section on uh, the uh, SAG performance is, uh, is our, you know, our take on the financial statements and we provide that because at this time, effectively, the government is not providing annual reports on their own uh, financial statements. So we we thought it would be important for, uh, you know, um, the public to, and, and the legislators for that matter, to see at least some analysis of uh, results in, in, uh, in um, uh, a documented form, and we thought it would be, uh, our, this report would be an, a good place to put it. But uh, in, in essence, uh, these are, this is the type of information, uh, Wendy, in asking that question, would, uh, you know, you would expect to find in uh, an annual report, for example. And that's what we just mentioned. Again, those annual reports uh, are not being prepared at this time. Can I just press you a little bit more on, on their sort of robust position, if you like, of their, whether it is or it isn't, given the size of this project that's coming up, that they will be managing and, and they will be collecting the money and uh, all the rest of it. It will be an important, they will be an important part, like the board and the, the port. So do they have the governance? Do they have the structures? Do they have the systems, as you, you often criticize? Are they ready to take this pod project on? I think um, from our view, it's still obviously at an early stage of uh, whether who, who's going to be the owner of the uh, dock. And so from there, that will depend where really the infrastructure, the uh, management frameworks will need to be in place for the construction of the dock and uh, really all the information that needs to go around that. So right now it seems to be playing out between kind of uh, with the Ministry of Tourism and the Port Authority. And uh, from our view, it's still unclear who is taking complete responsibility for it, whether it will be the Port Authority Board or whether it will be uh, through the Ministry of Tourism. I have another one unless anybody wants uh, Okay. Um, the the fraud in the fraud section. Can you tell us a little what, bit more? What page are you on? Uh, about the um, that your concerns that you've raised about that the uh, I think it's the fingerprinting system for immigration that never happened. I think that's what you're referring to. Um, but I'm that's what, one of my questions is is that the immigration system that you're referring to and um, what were what was if you can say what was reported to the corruption commission anti-corruption commission I should say and I don't know what page it's on I don't think we had mentioned that as um, a fraud situation it's under the it's under the heading fraud and corruption uh, we mentioned fraud and corruption during the audit oh no it's the HSA, H HSA one yes oh okay sorry so I thought it was I yeah. was misunderstanding I see that thank you that's yep. all I have Morning, gentlemen. Um, Morning. You mentioned here the need for some changes to the current financial reporting framework. Um, could you speak a little more to that issue? What kinds of changes do you think need to be made? Sure. Um, I guess one thing just to say too, well, the entity financial statements are getting better each year. It is just one step really to getting the real job done and of informing the legislative assembly and the public about what government is doing with public funds. And if I could maybe use an analogy that might help here uh, to understanding what we're hoping to see happen is would be using kind of uh, American football analogy. And so I'm going out of my box here a bit as an auditor, but uh, it might help explain some of this um, as well. Um, in football, you have a coach uh, with a playbook and a team made up of many players, such as a receiver, uh, quarterback, rushers, etc. Um, they need a good set of players in all areas in order for the team to be successful and win. Um, what we see in government uh, is that government is still just really in the practicing stage and doing what we would call maybe rushing plays at this point in time 
uh, which we would relate to preparing financial statements. Uh, there are observers watching them practice, which the observers we would indicate would be the auditors, um, and that they're not a, their practices are not even being too successful at this point in time because uh, the rushing plays that, um, that they're really receiving still qualifications on the audit. So it would mean in that analogy of a rushing uh, running back that they're either fumbling the ball when it's being handed to the quarterback, uh, from the quarterback to the running back. So that's one way we would look at it as well. Uh, and then the observers or the auditors in this case have noticed also part of the playbook is missing. We've never observed them practicing any uh, passing plays. And uh, where we would consider the passing plays maybe to be the performance information or management discussion and analysis. And without that being practiced, especially even at what we would call the ministry portfolio level, therefore they can't even get into the game yet uh, where you can attract the fans, make the money, and pay the players appropriately. So hopefully that kind of that analogy helps a bit where what stage they're at and where we hope for them to get at where they need to work together as a team, each individual entity, each individual ministry, portfolio, uh, statutory authority, government company, that they need to be using the same playbook. So that's helpful in understanding how kind of it all works or needs to work. Yeah. Um, but specifically to calling for changes in legislation, it looked like you, there was mention of simplification in some fashion. I'm just trying to get a better understanding of what this means. Sure. Uh, let me take that, um, April. A couple of years ago, the, uh, the Auditor General issued a report uh, talking about the uh, financial reporting framework uh, as outlined in the PMFL and how difficult it was for government uh, managers to actually prepare financial statements, meaningful financial statements, given that particular framework. In particular, there's the, uh, I'll, you know, one example of, of how complex that framework really is, is the distinction between executive expenditures, revenues and expenditures, and the entity revenues and expenditures, and how that all gets accounted for at the end, and whether or not someone really understands what a set of financial statements looks like, or what it means when you look at those financial statements, when you have all these complexities of different uh, uh, funds coming from different places with different expectations for accountability. So as a result, we at that time uh, discussed the, the the fact that the PMFL, in order for it to really provide uh, true accountability for the use of public funds in the Cayman Islands government, needed to be simplified somewhat so that government managers could report more simply to the Legislative Assembly about how they've used their funds. Uh, we understand uh, since uh, that report, as, and it's been it's public knowledge, that there was a, a committee that was formed by government to, to make recommendations um, uh, to the Legislative Assembly on changes to legislation, and we understand uh, those reports from that committee are being considered at this time. But uh, that's the best, I, you know, that anything more than that, you'd have to ask uh, Mr. Manderson and his officials as to where they are in terms of uh, that, those changes. Does that help? Okay. How frustrating is it for you guys that this seems like such simple stuff? Like if this were the private sector, if you didn't do your annual report, it didn't seem like you would have a job for very long. Is this like really kind of make you guys want to bang your head against the wall at how mind-numbingly simple it seems to like just do a report on the year that is finished and get it in before the deadline of getting it in? I mean, is it? really, really basic stuff here that we're having to harp on every single year. Uh, I mean, how do, you, how do you guys get to sleep, like, knowing it's just that easy for them to do that? <laughs> lot, lot, there's a lot in, that, lot in that question there, Joe. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think, yeah, in regards to that, um, it, it, it's interesting just to think through the annual report process and that financial performance information management discussion and analysis on the financial statements. Like we mentioned in the financial statements on their own quite often are very difficult to interpret and really assess how government used their funds. Uh, the annual report we're hoping will help tell that story of how they used their funds um, and to meet their objectives and really what outcomes were achieved by the public resources that were given to them. 
So for us, yes, it is somewhat frustrating that we come back to say this, uh, but we understand to the enormous backlog that they have overcome and are basically almost there at this point in time in regards to producing the financial statement. So that's why we're trying to put this out now is really here's the, the next step that they really need to take is getting their annual reports done and getting the performance information in those annual reports. So they may need to even develop um, new systems and practices to gather that information at this point in time. So we're trying to put them on alert. Uh, we have done this in the past, put them on alert for that. But uh, like you said, it, it's been slow acceptance for it. And uh, a lot of them, if they have tried in the past, have really just given a very, uh, what I would call a simple uh, annual report and just reporting against either their ownership agreement or purchase agreement and just saying whether they did those things or not. If I could just cool. add uh, to that, uh, the government spends literally millions of dollars uh, keeping their accounts and preparing financial statements. They spend a lot of money doing that and if you're going to spend that much money doing something, it should have some effect at the end of the day on what is done, what, what happens in, in terms of in, in government with respect to the kind of decisions that are made, both at the senior management level and in the legislature. And our report highlights the need for that information because there's, it's a, 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 a very, very costly exercise to go through to prepare these very, very um, I'll call it, uh, they're, they're very uh, detailed financial statements. They're very extravagant in terms of, they're, they're very, a um, uh, uh, best way to describe it is they do meet perf uh, the, the international standards and we've gone to great lengths to, to ensure that they do meet all the standards uh, in the legislation. Um, we now need to go that next step if we're going to actually use those statements and, and make the, the kind of decisions uh, in government and managers have to make those kind of decisions using that information. It's a, it's a, as uh, the auditor, uh, de uh, acting auditor general said, it's a futile exercise if we don't take that next step. Reshma Raghunath, Kiman reporter. Um, you talked about the challenges, and in the report there were some challenges, and that there are no annual reports. Do you believe that this is eroding the aim of the public sector? Um, legislation that you know the the principles of proper accounting transparency do you see that eroding um, we don't uh, see it eroding actually it has been improving like we have mentioned in regards to the financial statements being produced in a timely manner now uh, and being submitted to us and a lot of the audits are being completed in a timely manner as well uh, because of the quality of information being provided to us. Uh, where we see the downside is in that accountability and transparency is in regards to what we were just mentioning with the annual reports providing that performance information. And right now the current legislation, uh, the PMFL, does require that to have the financial uh, performance information in an annual report, which is actually to be tabled in the legislative assembly. So right now what we found was many ministry portfolios didn't uh, have prepared those annual reports, um, where some SAGCs have prepared the annual reports and have tabled them in the legislative assembly, but we would consider them still fairly weak on the performance uh, management discussion and analysis uh, aspect of those annual reports. You talked about frustration. Do you feel like a toothless bulldog that you can't, you know, you're just barking and, and nobody's paying attention? I mean, you're talking until you're blue in the face. Um, yeah. Are there any steps that you can take, any legislative provisions that give you any kind of power to enforce these um, recommendations or the requirements of the law? Um, I think part of it is still, well, we don't feel we're toothless in a sense that way. Uh, and part of it is that we need to get this message out. And this is one way of getting the message out to the public. And the public hopefully will pressure, put pressure on government as well. 
what we try and do is come alongside government as well and help them in various ways uh, by highlighting certain aspects such as the performance management information uh, within an annual report that they should be producing this. So we're trying to give them at least uh, a roadmap going forward of here's things that we need to do. And we also support significantly what's called Professional Development Week or Government Professional Development Week um, where management within government can be trained and to understand better what performance uh, measurement is, how do they provide certain, uh, how do they document their own programs that they're delivering in their ministry's portfolios, uh, looking at enterprise risk management. So we're trying to do it from different ways instead of always just the hammer over the head. Uh, we're trying to use different methods of helping basically government achieve some of these objectives. Further, uh, just to add to that, um, our, our mandate is to report uh, to the Legislative Assembly about what we find. So uh, when we find uh, these type of uh, uh, issues, we, we report them to the Legislative Assem Assembly. It's then technically, uh, according to the way the governance structure works, we, it's the PAC that hears our reports and then takes those recommendations forward and holds government managers to account. That's the way it is supposed to work. Um, we w will be in sh uh, short order, we hope, uh, presenting and, and discussing this report uh, at a uh, Public Accounts Committee hearing. And at that time, the members of the Public Accounts Committee will make, should make recommendations uh, to the uh, administration of government to uh, correct these uh, uh, significant, I'll say, significant deficiencies in financial reporting at this time. At this time, I think we'll uh, we'll end the uh, media conference. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very, very much for coming today. I'll remind everybody at this time that uh, copies of these reports, as all our reports are available on our website, they'll be available on our website immediately following uh, this uh, media conference. So thank you again for coming today. Yeah, thank you.